Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Robert Rayburn here at Life Pro Asset Management. It is May 20th of 2024. Certainly glad that everyone could join us. We've had a nice, strong breakout in the markets, not just here in the US, but overseas as well. So what we want to do this week is really review market action, both across stocks and bonds here in the US, overseas, and really have a good understanding of whether uh, we think this rally has longevity, whether the recent rally is being backed by many sectors or is it narrow in breadth, uh, really, really gauging the overall health of the market and what is the market trying to tell us, not just about the U.S., but overall global economic health. So let's go ahead and get started like we always do. I'm going to share my screen and the title of this week's presentation is China Deploys Its Bazooka. And it's pretty straight to the point. And uh, we look at what China did this week. It really reminds us of March of 2009 and the U.S. and the global financial crisis, where the U.S. finally blinked and said, listen, we can't let these banks go under. We have to rescue the financial system. We have to put a floor on the overall economy. We have to stop the bleeding, even if that creates... Uh, issues with the, you know, the the electorate, et cetera, uh, we have to do something. And that's really where China is. And China is, of course, is not a democracy. It is a totalitarian dictatorship. And government change there does not occur peacefully. So the government knows this. They need to make sure the economy has a floor. And that floor isn't 30 stories down. So what we saw this week is that the Chinese government committed to rescuing the property sector. They didn't say that explicitly, but when we look at the programs that they're putting in place, whether that's buying, uh, buying up unused properties or uh, bringing down the down payment uh, requirements for uh, individual Chinese citizens, uh, certainly some very strong commitments across the board from the government. So our agenda items this week are going to be, what does this mean for investors? Number two, is the U.S. economy slowing down? And number three, who and what benefits from this current market backdrop? Now, in terms of portfolio moves, we continue to reduce our energy exposure. This does relate back to our call on the U.S. economy. And not to jump ahead, but we do think that is slowing down. So as a result, we want to reduce our footprint in energy for the time being. From a secular standpoint, we love energy. But we also have significant gains in energy. So, you know, we want to take some gains, not be greedy, uh, shift that elsewhere where we see some cheap assets available, and then revisit the sector when we see the business cycle reaccelerating. Where did we deploy that capital? We went, we increased our exposure outside the US and specifically in emerging markets. China exposure increased, Southeast Asia exposure increased, in particular, Korea. And then obviously uh, we were looking at some real estate plays as well, as we do believe rates will come down in sympathy with a slowing U.S. economy. Uh, in terms of the market overall, the market peaked out at 52.65 uh, before this last correction started. We broke through those levels this week. And I think that's really important to note because when we came into the beginning of the week, we really wanted to see how is the market going to react to resistance? A lot of people were concerned about various factors. It could be China. It could be uh, inflation here in the U.S. It could be uh, the election, right? There's just so many things that the, the random investor could have been worried about, especially in the backdrops of a correction. We The market fought its way through a lot of those concerns. And a big reason why is, of course, uh, the inflation report that came out on Tuesday. It was Tuesday or Wednesday? It was one of those days. I lose track sometimes. And if you remember back to last week's update, we really started to shift the portfolio away from the sort of pro-inflation setup to this slowing setup where inflation's coming down, you're starting to disinflate, U.S. growth is starting to slow, and as a result, you get lower rates. And as a result, you get other types of assets that perform well relative to those assets that tend to benefit from rising inflation. And why, and a big part of that too, is the market backdrop in terms of the, the, the bets and positioning of Wall Street 
had become so skewed toward no rate cuts that it just from our standpoint and a positioning standpoint, it made sense to start making some bets toward maybe there would be a rate cut or two rate cuts. And we've been in the no rate cut camp all year. Uh, but when positioning gets skewed the other way, sometimes the easier money is to go where no one is positioned. So three big things from this bounce, strong momentum as the market has risen, strong breadth, strong volume, and we broke through, uh, we broke through overhead resistance. Number two, 5,600 now becomes the next target. We look at where, where we broke out from that 53 or 50, uh, or pardon me, 5265 prior level, breaking through that and then the length of the prior correction. And then lastly, protection continues to be sold. And so VIX really low. If there is one fly in the ointment, it is that. VIX is very low. Protection is being sold. Not a lot of demand for portfolio insurance. Unfortunately, that tends to be where things can pop up or crop up or surprise people. Uh, so that is the one fly in the ointment. We're keeping a close eye on that. Three of the four boxes are checked. S&P 500, as we noted, broke through prior resistance, as did triple Qs, that's the NASDAQ, as well as small cap stocks. The one fly in the ointment out there are the transports. Um, they are the one sector, which they are an important sector, uh, that is an outlier where they did not hit new highs and the relative performance has been relatively weak coming out of the transports. For us, this actually does make sense because when we look at what rates are doing, when we look at what economic surprises are doing, in other words, we look at these economic reports coming out from the US, they're coming in below expectations. We're seeing, uh, we're, we're seeing ISM manufacturing slow down, new orders slow down, consumer retail sales slowing down. All of this paints a picture of the US is, the US economy is finally starting to slow down. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It just changes how we need to try and make money. Uh, and so let me walk you through that. Uh, first of all, slowing down is a good thing, believe it or not, because the risk has always been this throughout this entire year that the U.S. economy was going to overheat. The Fed would have to respond through more rate hikes and, in other words, be forced to break the economy. A soft landing is a good thing. So we see here transports, highly cyclical, correlated to GDP, starting to slow down. That's the first sign. So three big things here. Inflation is starting to slow again in the U.S. We saw that in the inflation report this week. Even in the PPI, which is your pipeline inflation, the revisions actually were negative. So we actually had deflation in the PPI pipeline uh, from last month's revision. So that is... Somewhat indicative of what we might be able to expect in CPI over the coming months. Not necessarily negative, but a slowdown in inflation. Uh, China pulling out that stimulus bazooka that has obviously very big implications for China, but it also has very big implications for the rest of the world, right? That classic phrase of when a butterfly flaps its wings uh, in China, you, know, you get a tidal wave or whatever it is overseas, same type of deal. Uh, and then lastly, it does appear that the banks, REITs, emerging markets, and China stocks, they're all kind of breaking out while certain cyclical areas of the U.S. stock market are slowing down, such as the transports, such as certain pockets of technology. So that's what we want to continue uh, our focus on. In terms of our framework, it's pretty simple. Uh, the U.S. economy is starting to slow. Everyone's position for the U.S. being the top dog in terms of U.S. economic growth. China, meanwhile, everyone's pessimistic, positioned for its uh, economy to go down, uh, down, a, down a wormhole. Its economy is starting to accelerate. We saw industrial production there. Unlike the U.S., which surprised the downside, it surprised massively to the upside. To retail su sales side, it's still a little bit sluggish. We expect that to follow suit pretty, pretty quick. Um, so what do we do? Okay, well, we know U.S. stocks are expensive to the rest of the world. Uh, it made sense before because the U.S. economy was accelerating, earnings were accelerating, the rest of the world was not following suit. That's starting to change. As a result, let's look at valuations. Well, guess what? EM stocks are emerging market stocks. They're really, really cheap versus U.S. stocks. Slap on the fact that growth 
in those countries may actually be starting to accelerate and close the gap with the U.S., that leads to a huge catalyst for those stocks to move up while maybe you at certain parts of the U.S. market move down or move sideways. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and, and we think of that soft landing. We look at the economic surprise index. We talked about that before. As the U.S. was accelerating, we saw analysts on Wall Street move up their estimates, whether it could be for retail sales, industrial production, employment, et cetera. Now the U.S. is starting to surprise to the downside. Interest rates, long-term interest rates in particular, tend to be correlated to economic surprises. So if interest rates follow this move lower from at the economic surprise index, we do expect rates to continue to move lower. That's why we like housing right now. And we think of the consumer discretionary index, again, negative relative performance versus the S&P 500. That's the second clue. Again, transports relative to utilities, right? We see that breaking down. This is a big, big breakdown versus utilities. So utilities are accelerating. Third clue, transports breaking down. Utilities don't tend to accelerate into an acceleration of growth because utilities really are just like bonds. So they provide you a fixed, some sort of fixed dividend payout, not a lot of earnings growth. So people tend to buy those types of stocks when rates are falling because your real yield is going up as a result. <clears throat> so the question is, can leadership be found outside of the US? And our answer to that is we believe so. So when we look at the KWEB index or the KWEB ETF, this is the China tech ETF. It is coming out of a massive, massive multi-year base. Um, and when we look at right now, the uh, the Chinese KWEB index, the Chinese technology index is, is down 68% from its prior high. We look at, it's trading at 32 right now. It was trading over 100 at its peak. We think there is significant upside there. <clears throat> we look at the PEs. We look at the valuation. The sector trades just north of uh, 15 times versus 30 times for the U.S. Again, for the U.S. Magnificent Seven. So we think there is a significant opportunity here to close that valuation gap. We look at the technicals here. The Hang Seng Index is the main stock index out of Hong Kong. Again, that rally in China has extended beyond technology. It includes finance, industrials, housing, commercial real estate. <clears throat> you name it across the board, we've seen that breakout. Same with banks and REITs here in the U.S. Again, that U.S. leadership appears to be changing out of the prior leadership of technology. And we see it in the banks and how they're performing. That's This specifically is the, uh, the BKX index, so the bank index. And we see similar action in REITs and utilities. So our thoughts, bottom line here is we do believe this market rally is real. We do think that stock, U.S. stocks, may rally, but the relative performance of U.S. stocks is going to fade relative to the world, rest of the world. That's our belief. So we are starting to shift some money overseas as a result of that. You do think that the U.S., we do think the U.S. economy is cooling and that credit markets do remain well behaved. So as we got for you this week, and I hope everyone has a great week and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.